Hello everyone, Pulse here and welcome to another episode of Delving Deep ESO. Now in today's episode we're going to jump right back into the discussion about the payment model being utilized in Elder Scrolls Online and uh, mainly doing that to clarify on my original argument that I kind of messed up trying to present in the previous payment model video. Uh, but I'm also going to combine that original discussion with some of the new stuff that was confirmed just after the original recording of the previous video. So uh, let's start off with the payment model and then we'll add on the extra info that we've learned about. And then finally I'll finish up as I like to do with a culmination of my thoughts and opinions uh, where I just really try to combine all of the details, all of that being considered all at once. And uh, yeah, I'll do my best to clarify and properly convey my thoughts onto why Zenimax is using this payment model, and then uh, I'll talk about what I feel about it. So let's just dive right in, shall we? So let me see here. Elder Scrolls Online, for those who don't know, will be released at a $60 box price tag with a 30-day playtime card included in the box. And then beyond that first month of play, you'll have to then start paying a $15 a month subscription fee. Now, I criticized Wildstar for this pretty high price tag, this pretty uh, large barrier to entry, and I'm going to have to do it here as well. Why is it suddenly okay for these companies to think it's, it's fine to start charging us so much up front when we then have to pay to continue playing beyond the first month? This is very old school, and um, I, we, it's 2013, guys. We have come so far... We don't need to be taken advantage like this, and it's, in all honesty, kind of a shady move. And uh, it's one that's kind of disheartening as well, because it would kind of suggest to me, and it does to a lot of people I see in the same opinion going around, that ESO will not keep people playing. And Zenimax and Bethesda know this and have decided to go in with such a high box price to recoup as much money as possible from those initial box sales. And uh, obviously this is just speculation. And it, it, it's, it's not something we can take with, uh, without just buckets of salt attached to it, to be honest. But the, the whole thing is, all of it combined is, is a bit of a bad smell. $60 plus the sub, sub fee, along with the other stuff we'll talk about in a bit, it just it has me pondering, what, what is going on with Zenimax and Bethesda? Are they just lacking that much confidence in their product? And it's not really a good sign when when you start having this sense of, of uh, lacking confidence with your own product that's been in development for a long time, it just, it, it gives off some bad vibes and it's, um, it's kind of worrying. But uh, you know what, maybe we're just being a little bit hasty. Maybe we're jumping to the gun, we're making our judgments too early, we don't know everything. So, so maybe this isn't the case at all. Maybe it's just Zenimax and Bethesda are deciding to release Elder Scrolls Online with a, a similar price to its competitors, uh, namely Wildstar, because that's the one that, ever, that, like, those are the two games that have kind of been developed side by side, and they're going to release fairly close to each other in terms of AAA MMO release dates. So maybe that's all it is. They just seen their competitors coming out at $60 and decided to copy that. So that goes on to the subscription fee then. That's the next part of the payment model. Which uh, I said during the previous video, I'm I'm actually not all that upset about. Uh, I actually think it's perfectly fine. Um, the the standard payment model that is pay to play, just it hasn't been standard anymore. It hasn't been standard for quite some time, and that's really due to free to play MMOs overpopulating the the MMO space, and their success coupled with the uh, coupled with the recent success of buy to play, um, it just it really makes those two models. On, seem much more appealing and and it's not really hard to see why i mean free to play just for example is is super attractive to players because there's no barrier to entry and it's super attractive to developers because despite the whole idea that it's quote unquote free it's actually not free at all and a lot of times the free to play uh brings in just as much money if not more than if they were a sub game and uh, so it's really attractive to to both players and developers alike so so why is pay to play being implemented then well I suppose this is as good as time as any to kind of go over, uh, give an overview at least, and clarify a little bit on my original theory and argument for why pay to play is actually being implemented here. So, so let's start off with this argument then. So, think of this. NCSoft owns what two games? Well, they own Guild Wars 2, and they just so happen to own Wildstar, which recently came out and said they're going to be a $60 box price 
and they're going to have a sub fee. And in addition to that, they're not utilizing a beta play buy to play model in any way, which is weird because NCSoft and Guild Wars 2 essentially pioneered this idea, and it's one that's very popular. So, so why are they not using this? Well, the conclusion that I came to was Guild Wars 2 is simply just, it's not the same kind of game that Wildstar and Elder Scrolls Online are not going to be. There, it's just, it fills a different niche. Uh, niche, rather. Guild Wars 2 simply does not have proper endgame, and it, it just doesn't compare to the PvE endgame content that a lot of hard hardcore MMO fans want. And that content just so happens to be something that's going to be developed in both Wildstar and Elder Scrolls Online. Now, someone pointed out to me in the comments of the previous payment model video, and I did want to mention it here, that they were saying it, it seemed to them that Guild Wars 2 and ArenaNet kind of opted to, to pick their path, and they decided to do World v. World v. World instead of raiding. And uh, I actually think that's a fair assumption. That's perfectly fine of them to do. It just, it means Guild Wars 2 fits their niche harder. They, they are stuck to that niche unless they decide to expand content outward. And um, the thing is also that needs to be considered with that is that Wildstar and ESO both will have World v. World style PvP zones and PvE rating that is currently missing from Guild Wars 2. And uh, really that suggests to me that it all comes down to money. So, so what does this mean for Elder Scrolls Online then? Well, the argument stands pretty firm in my mind that Endgame is the missing part from the product like Guild Wars 2 that is going to be in Wildstar and ESO, and the correlation between Wildstar and NCSoft and Guild Wars 2 leads me to believe that this is the true reasoning for why this sub-fee is being implemented. Now, I do want to make it clear, I'm not dismissing the potential of buy-to-play here. It's not like I think pay-to-play is better than buy-to-play. I actually think that uh, it's it's kind of weird that buy-to-play didn't take off as much as everyone thought it would and kind of take over as the standard for AAA MMOs. It just seems like it works so well. So why have they not done it? And it just, it really comes down to, to finances in my mind. And I think that's why Wildstar and ESO are both opting to try their hands at a subscription fee. Only time will tell if that's the right move. I do think that pay-to-play can work, but uh, I, I do agree with a lot of people that it, it's it's a little bit surprising. Why is buy-to-play not being used? Um, and it really comes down, in my mind anyway, that buy-to-play simply doesn't provide enough cash flow to give the developers enough time and funding to produce the like hardcore rating content and the other worthwhile in-game stuff that, that MMO fans want. Maybe it's something that uh, Elder Scrolls fans won't care that much about, but it, it's something that the the MMO fans want, for sure. And then this kind of leads me to some new stuff, because I, I am still fairly positive uh, about the sub -fee. My thoughts on it are still okay. I'm, I'm not disliking it too much. But the problem is there's some new stuff that's come out that's a little bit more negative, and it, there's not too many arguments you can make to support them in my mind. So, so first up, there's the $60 price tag, which we, we already talked about. It's pretty hefty. It's a, a fairly large barrier to entry, especially with an MMO coming out that's new. Even though the IP isn't new, the, the fact is it's drawing in people that have never played MMOs before, and $60 price tag is pretty hard to get around if you have to think about the sub-fee as well. And uh, alongside that, they've also confirmed that we're getting an in-game shop system as well. And um, that alongside the sub fee and $60 price tag is pretty awful, I have to say. But we'll get into the details of that in a moment. And then finally, beyond these things, we have uh, some reports coming out that seem to suggest that console users are indeed going to have to pay a sub fee plus the price for PS Plus or Xbox Live. And I mentioned this in, a, in the previous video that we shouldn't have to worry about this at all. And then Microsoft and Sony just come out and like, bitch slap me through the internet saying no 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 we're we're still too stupid to to realize this is a no-brainer and uh i seen that and i just went like what the fuck is going on what is wrong with the world but uh, i'll get to that a little bit later there's not much to say about it but i do feel like it's just it's wrong for christ's sake get your shit together guys but um all in all the reaction um saying it lightly has been abysmal and um, I still plead to everybody out there to give this a chance. Don't don't turn your back, as I see a lot of people do on the internet, just 
turn their back away from a product they've been following for a long time and then walk away and to hell with it and they'll just wait for the next thing. I just feel like that's the wrong attitude. Just give it a chance. But um, I have to say it's pretty hard for me to defend Elder Scrolls Online with all of this going on. Um, there's there's a lot of people even calling this, this sub fee plus box price plus uh, game store triple dipping. Um, and I suppose for the console gamers, they can start calling it quadruple dipping. Um, and it's it's ridiculous because the console gamers are getting shafted, uh, and and just the the players of the game are, are having a ridiculous uh, amount of, of money taken away from them. And every, every turn, they're just trying to get some money in their pocket. So so let's start off with the store, shall we, for a little bit? Now, what have we been told about the store? Well, we've been told it's going to have fun items. It's going to have cosmetics. It's going to have um, Services like name changes, and uh, I assume that also means maybe not on release, but shortly after you'll get the typical chain of stuff where it goes. You'll get name changes, you'll get uh, race changes, or you'll get like facial reconstructive surgery style stuff where you can remake your character, gender gender changes, and then I'm sure if there's enough enough people bitching about it, you'll get like faction changes for a price or something like that. But all of those things usually come. Uh, down the line. So I expect all of those things to be in the store. And uh, we've also been told that that's all there is to it. There's not going to be any game-changing items. There's not going to be any boosts. There's not going to be any armors. There's not going to be anything like that that can be considered pay-to-win. Now here's the thing about the store, even if it's not pay-to-win. I personally don't give a damn. I don't give a flying shit about buying cosmetics and mounts and stuff like that for real life cash. I just don't. I don't feel the need to spend money on something that I personally classify as frivolous. However, I do know for a fact that there is a large group of people whom I've met a lot of through roleplay in MMOs and just playing MMOs in general throughout the years. There's a huge group that simply cannot resist the urge to pay for the new shiny armor skin or changing their hairstyle, or getting that reconstructive surgery, or paying to buy uh, to fly a new mount, or to ride around on the new thing, or uh, everything that's that's just pointless to me. It's pointless. But the thing is, it might be pointless to me. It's not to somebody else. And the problem comes into that it's it's going to be ludicrously priced. I mean, just for example, at WoW. Now, obviously, we don't know if this is the case. The problem is all the signs point to it being the case. So I'll just continue on. We have WoW, for example. They, they've made it okay to pay crazy amounts for pets and mounts and stuff for years now. And uh, despite the fact that some of these things, just for example, $25 for a goddamn mount. $25! Now, I can't say that I have any idea what it feels like to be able to justify $25 for a digital unicorn that can fly around and poop out sparkles. And I just can't say I know what it feels like to pay real life money for something so stupid but you know what this shit sells like freaking hotcakes and they buy by the bucket load and you you know what it just litters the public areas with people wearing stupid ass armor that all looks the same everyone's riding the same mounts and it all looks ridiculous but you know what why do i or anyone else for that matter care if i am not required to buy any of this stuff maybe it kills the immersion a little bit but that's not a reason to go on so ranty, is it? Well, you know what is ranty worthy? It's just the overall business practice here. Because the way they're implementing this, it, you just have to think what they're going to be getting into their pocket between all of these things. You have the income from the box price, which is ridiculously high. You have the sub fee, which is at the standard, but uh, it shouldn't be standard anymore, price of $15 a month. And then you have this in-game store, all of these combined, Elder Scrolls Online better come out and just give a ridiculously good first impression to keep people playing, and it better be entertaining and engaging, and it it's just gonna it's gonna bomb otherwise. They better have something really really good hiding somewhere that they're not showing us if they think that they can, as I said earlier, triple dip into the player base, and it's kind of worrisome. Now, this this is the other thing. This kind of brings me to. Uh, a very worrisome theory that I see going around the net right now, but I, I want to mention it not because I think it's true. I, I honestly think that it's it's probably not going to happen. But the thing is, the way the facts are lining up now, it's actually not far-fetched. So 
here's the theory, right? There, there's people on the net right now that I've seen a, a lot of times uh, commenting something like this, where they say that um, now that the the end game store has been confirmed, they they can definitively say that Elder Scrolls Online was never planned to be a subscription model for long, and instead they're uh, they're releasing Elder Scrolls Online, Bethesda and Cinemax are de deliberately implementing this in a way so that they can uh, capitalize on the the fans, the Elder Scrolls Online fans and the people following at heart who are willing to buy it day one for the $60 price and subscribe for a couple months. And then when it tanks, a lot of people are saying when, when it will fail, they're just convinced of this, uh, due to the lack of subscribers obviously, they're saying it's going to go free to play with all the systems already in place and uh, then they're just going to instantly flop from capitalizing on the box price of uh, like day one fans to then capitalizing on the free to play market and the people waiting it out for the flop and um, at first I seen this even before the confirmation of store and stuff and um, it just it just seemed to me like it was people waiting for the free to play like the people that just for whatever reason cannot justify doing anything else but free to play and and I was like well this is this isn't gonna happen this just can't happen and the thing is the store comes out and is confirmed, and the box price out and then is confirmed, and then you get this console bullshit as well coming out and, and seeming like it's going to happen this way, and all of this combined, it doesn't make that theory so far-fetched because if you think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of logic going into that, and um, I, I personally, I do not think this is going to happen, and uh, I, I pray to the gaming gods above that this doesn't turn out to be the case, uh, mainly because this would just be one of the most shady and, and ridiculous business practices and it would be a massive slap to the face of the Elder Scrolls Online faithful and the fans willing to take a chance with a game that in its current state is receiving tons of negative press. It just, it would just be such a kick in the nuts, really it would. But uh, you know what, I, I don't think that's going to be the case. I, I'm praying hard that that's, that's not what's going to happen. So, so then what do I think of the whole sub fee plus in-game store thing. Well, honestly, I still think that the reasoning for the sub-fee is indeed to provide the extra cash flow for in-game content. I, I'm pretty convinced at this point that that is at least their intent. Only time will tell if that's what we're going to actually get, obviously, but I'm still feeling that that's, that's their intent, that they want to reach out and kind of re-grab the, the hardcore raiding community and the hardcore MMO community that, that doesn't really have anywhere to go. There's not too many games I can think of right now that, that really uh, give you that experience. Uh, WoW is a game that's just really been on the decline and hasn't had experiences worthwhile enough to keep those people. And there's just not enough, un enough games that have the hardcore in mind. And I feel like that's what both this game and Wildstar are going for. It just seems that way. It just really looks that way to me. Now, uh, I think that the sub the sub fee is fine by itself, but I do want to say that alongside the store, even though I don't mind the idea of the extra cosmetics, even if it is real life money, um, I feel like deep down they're just going to copy WoW way too close, and they're going to have these ridiculously high prices on everything, everything cosmetic, everything mount, just everything like that. That's, that is typical. The problem is that's very free to play and it's very it's very nasty and I don't I don't like it and I, I can't possibly justify both of these things side by side if it isn't implemented with such high prices. If they really wanted to do this, and I even I believe like two or three ESO videos ago, I stated something along the lines of if they came in and did a hybrid, they might be creating some buzz and be appealing to a lot of different people like five to ten sub fee plus the in-game shop thing and then like if they really really felt confident had like a very small box price as well and even then I think that would have been too far but but instead they've decided to go with all of the things that are standard from like eight years ago that's the problem they've decided to go fifteen dollar a month sixty bucks up front in-game store price gouging the shit out of players at, at every turn uh, especially those who can't resist the like free to play the people who love the free to play shops and stuff this is going to take so much advantage of them and it's just it's nasty break business practice so in the end guys i will say this i personally still have a ton of faith in elder scrolls online there's a lot of systems in place that are just really appealing and, and interesting and kind of changing it up a little bit not not enough to be 
unfamiliar, but different enough to really uh, satiate that uh, that need for change, that need for new. And um, I also think that the sub fee is a perfectly viable option. The problem is if it will be viable if the content is worthwhile and hopefully Zenimax can prove to us very soon that indeed this is the case, that the extra cash they are pulling in from the sub fee and now from the in-game store as well are are being put to good use. Um, I do think that the hefty box price plus the in-game store alongside the sub fee that they originally announced um, is just is really not cool. It really harkens back to the very broken and abusive systems that Blizzard started so long ago and honestly have gotten away with for so long. And you can see it now, it's, it's not working out for them. That game is going down fairly quickly. Obviously it's showing its age, but I feel like that's some of the problem as well. It's just their systems, their, their, just, uh, their treatment of the fan base. Now, as for the console pricing issue, that I can't believe is actually being discussed. I feel like this should just be a no-brainer. And it's kind of astounding that, that this is something that they're having to discuss and fight over. Um, I realize that this isn't really something that Bethesda or Zenimax has much control over, honestly. However, in my mind, it, it's still pretty boggling that it, it's something that the companies are arguing about. And I hope that uh, Sony and Microsoft come to their senses and allow this... Um, ability to bypass the PS Plus and Xbox Live fees for Elder Scrolls subscribers uh, if they don't already use the services. Obviously, I'm not saying you're going to only pay like two bucks for Xbox Live because you're an ESO subscriber or something stupid like that. I'm saying you're just not going to have to pay the extra five a month or whatever it costs for Xbox Live and PS Plus when those comes out um, if you don't use them. So instead of being forced to buy those things, if you play ESO, that they, they, they needs to come off the table. And if they can't get that right, then I honestly think that Zenimax should, should bite the bullet on this. They should provide extra incentives in some way to the console base. Because right now, in, in my mind, as someone who plays MMOs, and I feel like there's, there's definitely this back and forth between, like, are these going to be even two separate experiences and all that stuff? I hope not. But the thing is, there's a lot of... I would consider them negatives that are going against the console already, just because it's you get the comfortable of the couch, but you don't get the the sociability quite as easily, just because of the way the keyboard and, and controller are separated. And it's it's a little stuff, admittedly, but I feel like they they just really need to provide extra incentive there if they're gonna make console players pay extra. And it's one of those things that it needs to be implemented in a way that they can counterbalance this extra pricing if this doesn't get fixed. Or else, even the the like hardcore uh, Elder Scrolls fans that have been playing on consoles forever, and they just they are maybe wanting to try an MMO, and they th think, oh wow, I can play it on the console now, and then they're gonna tack on this like extra fee and stuff. I feel like that will actually turn a lot of people off. But um, yeah, so let me end with this. I'm I'm still excited for Elder Scrolls Online. Don't get me wrong, I am absolutely still excited for this game. But I have to say that uh, this this like clumping of information coming out one after another after another is is just not great for them it's definitely put them in a bad spot in terms of uh, like player perception and, and future player perception now hopefully Cinemax has a fantastic showing at PAX pretty soon which will actually be uh, tomorrow I think as of posting this video and uh, I'm curious to see if they're actually going to do as me and a lot of other people are asking where we want them to show us some gameplay and give us some real feature details and just go into the nitty goddamn gritty about it already and and convince us that this extra cash from the sub fee combined with an in-game store is actually going to make Elder Scrolls Online a worthwhile experience prove to us that you're not just busting our balls, okay? Come on, Zenimax. I have faith in you. Just show us that all of this backlash that you're getting right now is unwarranted. Please, for the love of God, come out and show us your product. <laughs> now, finally, guys, I would say to anyone, again, even remotely interested in the game, that is Elder Scrolls Online. If you've even been following it just a little bit, give it a chance. Don't just turn on your heels and walk the other other way because you see one wave of negative stuff. Uh, in fact, I'd like people to think about it before they turn and walk away because there's there's so few games that come out these days with the way that media works on the internet that something doesn't get construed in a way that is negative. There's there, every game that comes out ever has 
has some negativity around it. So I wouldn't say just turn away from Elder Scrolls Online. This It just means it, it's not an exception to the rule. There's going to be negative press on every game that's released. And, and this is an, an exception. So don't turn your back on it if, if you've been following this at all. That'll do it for me, guys. This has been another episode of Delving Deep ESO. Now, uh, I'd just like to ask you guys to comment down below on what you guys think about the uh, the payment model. What do you think of this combination of sub fee and uh, box price and in-game store? And, uh, and also, what do you guys think about the console thing? Isn't that just ridiculous? So, uh, yeah, that'll do it for me, guys. Uh, I'd like to thank you so much for watching again. And uh, if I could, I'd like to bother you for a thumbs up, a subscribe, a comment down below again, and uh, stick to Nova Pulse Gaming for everything Elder Scrolls Online and uh, gaming industry related as a whole. Thanks again for watching. See ya.